Welcome, everyone. I'm happy that, that I had the pleasure to, to host today's lecture at the Poznan University of Technology, where we will cover the topic of the BIM libraries, which is also called the BIM, BIM content. I'm uh, representing a, a company called uh, BIM Streamer, but actually I'm uh, I'm not a, I'm not uh, coming from the construction industry. Actually, uh, quite contrary, uh, I'm a programmer, uh, system architect. Uh, I graduated Wrocław University of Technology, and I'm Master of Science uh, in Computer Science. So this is this might sound a bit odd for you that uh, I'm hosting today today's session, today's lecture um, on, on the uh, on the construction faculty. Uh, and in uh, talking about the BIM in particular, but you need to know that that BIM is very close to technology, and uh, you will hear about that more during today's uh, session. So, uh, in general, uh, I'm representing the BIM streamer, but BIM streamer is actually a product of a company called Sagiton. Uh, our company is ho is located in uh, in Wrocław, so pretty nearby Poznań, less than uh, 200 kilometers. Uh, away, and we're specializing in preparing the different digital solutions for, uh, for uh, mainly for manufacturers, but not only solutions related with information management, inform uh, their product information management, uh, and this solution actually very often relates to different uh, various kinds of web and uh, mobile apps, and. Uh, Sometime in 2015, one of the manufacturers actually approached us and asked if we were able to uh, to actually provide us uh, provide him with uh, some solution which allows them to shift the product information from their database from their systems directly into the BIM files, and that's how the the, the idea behind the BIM streamer actually started. I will also mention about uh, our products uh, in the course of this uh, of this uh, lecture because it will be more like uh, mm, very much connected with the subject of of the lecture which is the bim content which is the BIM, which are the bim libraries so on, this, on today's agenda i will tell a bit uh, what actually the the bim content the bim libraries is and how they uh, wh why they were uh, invented? For what? What are the origins of their uh, or of the needs of creating this this kind of this kind of libraries, this kind of context? Later on, uh, I will show you the uh, some some examples of how how it could be used, especially when it comes to the uh, the construction project. And at the very end of today's session, we will uh, show you. Uh, I will show you some 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 like demo examples because it's it's good to not only share with you some knowledge but also to to present uh, some some real case scenario thanks to which you would be able to pictureize what I'm actually talking about and it can be somehow um, set in stone set in stone but set in the back of your your head so that you can remember that uh, for the future and before. Before we continue, I have some some question for you. Uh, whether you have some uh, experience with uh, uh, with some BIM uh, uh, platforms uh, like like uh, Revit, like Archicad, uh, uh, or or maybe you work only with CAD. So right now I'm starting uh, a pool. Uh, if you could uh, answer them, I would really appreciate that. I'm 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 very curious. What are your uh, what are your answers? Because this would also help us to uh, to to address your uh, your current status uh, slightly better. So, waiting for your feedback. We're still waiting for uh, nine responses. If you're using some other platforms, please type them in within the chat window. We can walk through that answer later on. All right. And here are the ex here are the results. So um, 
I think that the Revit definitely wins. We will cover the the, the Revit example in, mostly in in uh, our cases, but I see that there are some uh, some other uh, answers. So some of you actually used CAD only, and there is some other BIM platform as well that uh, that were you that uh, was used by you. If so, uh, if someone used the other BIM platform, if if you could also uh, type within the chat window what kind of platform uh, uh, you you are experienced with, that would be also great. There is also a question for other uh, BIM software. Uh, so this example will for sure uh, be presented on the next slide. So so I will just put this this question on hold and. Uh, uh, and probably answer it uh, on one of the next few few slides. But believe it or not, there are few of them, uh, quite few of them. Um, yeah, I think so. It 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 can be it can be considered as a beam uh, as a beam uh, platform. I'm not so experienced in SketchUp, so I don't want it to uh, to take to, to tell much about that. But uh, if you navigate to different, uh, let's say. Uh, BIM portals or uh, BIM libraries of different manufacturers. Some of them actually provide the, the SketchUp files, and they consider that as as a BIM. In general, the BIM is everything which is a combination of, of geometry and, which is, I think, most important, the information. But let's wait with that for for the next slide. Okay, so we have the results. So I think that the the, the Revit is definitely a winner here, uh, especially when it comes to to our current uh, to our current audience. So let's move on to uh, to the origins of the BIM content, why it was actually created, what was it for, uh, w w what this whole uh, BIM content topic is is all about. So, before we answer this question, we need to answer the the um, the question: what the BIM content actually is. I think that this question not only refers to BIM content, BIM libraries but also to BIM in general. But but due to the fact that we're focusing on the BIM li libraries in particular on this session, let's uh, stick to that. So the BIM content is, of course, the geometry and then the metadata, which combined together creates a BIM content. The BIM content can be uh, called differently. Some of them may, may call them BIM objects. Some others may call them BIM libraries. Uh, I prefer to use it. Uh, to use the, the the term BIM content, but not for everyone. It's it, it's uh, quite clear. That's why I'm I just wanted to explain you that whether I'm referring to BIM object, BIM libraries, or BIM content, I'm always referring to the same thing. Okay, someone asked me uh, uh, what are the other what are the other platforms available on the market. Okay, so I think two most popular ones are Revit and, and Archicad and uh, on the next lecture that uh, that we will be, I will be presenting uh, within a week from now. Uh, I will show you some examples of how to prepare the BIM content uh, in both Revit and and Archicad. But of course, there are other platforms like uh, Tecla, like uh, like Allplan, uh, Vectorworks. Uh, someone mentioned SketchUp here. Uh, I, I think that uh, some platforms like DDS Cut could also be considered as a as a as a as a as a BIM, uh, there are some solutions from uh, from Trimble like uh, like like Plankal. Uh, of course, there is a Bentley uh, solutions. Uh, so there are quite few of them, um, and uh, each of them actually provides some sort some type of of libraries. What are the libraries? Of course, these are the components which we are going to use within the construction project. It could be doors, it could be windows, it could be lift shafts. It can be even materials like, uh, like uh, I don't know, structural layers or uh, or even paint. Yeah, paint is also a potential a BIM content that uh, that we can use uh, within within our project. And uh, the thing is that some of uh, the generic content that is provided by by the manufacturers such as autodesk or or graphisoft uh, or tech or or bentley were not sufficient and from um, from the standard libraries of components available within this uh, within the software the designers the planners noticed that something is actually missing they needed additional content in order to complete 
their project. That, so that's how it started. The content was required by the planners, by the designers, so that it can be used within their project. So this actually caused create a new market for both services and uh, and uh, and solutions. Uh, so first market was uh, for the the actual service providers that prepares the BIM content for, for the manufacturers. The other, uh, the other, let's say, market was created for, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with different BIM portals available on the, on the market, which uh, works in, in a similar way, like a, like a marketplace or marketplaces, or in Poland, we have this, this famous Allegro uh, site, or, or uh, let's say may, maybe more globally well-known uh, uh, Amazon or, or eBay is some 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 sort of an equivalent of uh, of of the BIM portal uh, in in a normal life, I would say. And when it comes to the BIM portal, they actually um, figure out that they they can somehow promote the manufacturer content uh, on some sort of a marketplaces, from which the the designers can fetch can download these uh, these files uh, and place them within their project so this leads us to the actual origin of creating the bim content by the manufacturer why they wanted to create the bim content to do the product placement so in general if you have a project and within this project uh, you have a specific product located which based on the bill of material that also can be generated from the BIM software can be handed over to for instance the the procurement department which later on buys the product it increased the probability that once your product was placed within the project it would finally be bought it's not the case that for sure you have 100 percent certainty that this would be the product that uh, that was placed within the the project but definitely uh, with a high probability or at least higher that that it will somehow um, increase the probability of of sale and that's what what is the original reason of creating the bim content by the manufacturers to do the product placement to give the the designers a tool which simplifies their work but in let's say return the manufact the designers use the manufactured products which later on gives the higher probability of being sold so another question for you is the maybe before uh, before we uh, we ask this question i will ask another one so do you know what is the LO lod are you familiar with this term and let's see the results to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty much surprised, but uh, yeah, we have almost 50-50. So some of you do know what the LOD states for and some of the some of you don't. So so maybe just for clarity, I will explain what uh, what the LOD states for. Actually, uh, to be honest, uh, it's not that easy to be answered because some of you may consider it as as, uh, as level of development, some of them as level of details. And I see even within your comments that both answered <laughs> both answers actually appears uh, to be honest i also heard the third one which called the level of documentation so uh, just to to be more let's say vague um, I, I can tell you that lod means more something more than two shortcuts but uh, for this uh, simplicity let's focus on the, the the difference between the level of the definition and uh, or uh, level of development and level of uh, of details because this is something that we will mostly uh, let's say refer to so when it comes to when it comes to the level of uh, development i think that this is more like a a topic uh, strictly related with the bim project and we would put put it aside from this from today's session due to the fact that we're focusing on the bim content in particular let's focus on the level of detail so uh, so the level of details is as it as you can imagine how uh, states how detailed the the the, the bim uh, geometry and the bim data actually is uh, so 
Um, when it comes to the level of details, uh, we are differentiating a different level of details, starting from 100, which is a very, very simple uh, level of details, which usually doesn't reflect the, the actual geometry uh, of, of, the, of the object, but, um, but it can act as some sort of a placeholder in the form of something like a bounding box. Uh, if we're talking about the LOD like 500, uh, then then we're uh, more talking about the the LOD uh, as they call it as built. So uh, so the lower uh, the, the lowest possible uh, let's say LOD is 100, and then we have something like 200, which is slightly slightly more uh, mm, uh, let's say mm, accurate. And if we are talking about uh, something like uh, 400 and 500, um, you can say that they are pretty much accurate. So the next question for you guys, what do you think should be the proper level of details for the BIM libraries? Waiting for your answers. All right, so here are the, the answer from our audience. So, so in great majority, over 50% of you believes that the the proper LOD level uh, is 300 330. Uh, I see also there are some some uh, does it, it depends. Uh, there is also a question. Does it, it depends on the resource? And I think that this is <laughs> one of the best answer we could get. It depends, of course. It always depends. But let's say in a, in general, what we can say is that it's very unlikely that the LOD should be greater than 350 for sure. Uh, 400, 500 for BIM libraries. Um, I think that there is there is a very there needs to be a very good explanation of, of creating such huge level of details uh, for uh, for the BIM for the BIM libraries. Actually I asked the very same question uh, uh, on uh, on the LinkedIn group called BIM Expert, I think this is one of the most popular BIM group, uh, which is uh, actually uh, available on the LinkedIn. And uh, to be honest, uh, the 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 feedback that I got from the BIM experts doesn't differ that much from the feedback that I got from you. So may maybe you can also consider yourself uh, potentially as a as as a BIM expert. Uh, Actually, uh, the, 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 the poll was conducted on uh, over 150 participants. Uh, here we have a slightly smaller poll because uh, only something like 25 people. But still, as you can compare these two, they are pretty much similar. The, uh, the 300, uh, 350 uh, are somehow uh, the highest one. Uh, and the 400 is uh, scored uh, on the second place. In my personal opinion, uh, I would uh, stick to something like LOD 100, uh, 200, um, for some specific cases, 300, 300, 350. But let's say that this is my personal uh, opinion uh, of a person that is focusing more on the information uh, rather than on, uh, on the geometry. Okay, uh, so, um, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the the LOD, I also found some very uh, very funny uh, post on LinkedIn, uh, which states that that uh, uh, which asked the question how we could imagine of having one hundred or one thousand of these kind of uh, light switchers within the project, uh, and as you can see, this light switcher is really beautiful. You know, it it has all these curves. Uh, all the the exact details where the screws should be placed. You know, you have this the switcher in the middle. It looks almost like uh, as built I, I, as they say it. Uh, but try to imagine that you have these switchers, uh, ten thousand uh, or or even a million within a project of of a hospital, and uh, and it it kills your computer. You know because uh, you know your BIM software needs to render all that stuff. And that's why when you're talking about the BIM content, you should really think uh, not about how the, the exact geometry should look like, how this all curves look like, 
but what do you want it to use it for and you, you you're not planning to use it for uh, for some 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 kind of 3d rendering or well, maybe sometimes you you do and maybe then it, it is somehow justified uh, maybe this is one of the reason why the, the the lod 500 or 400 might have some excuse to to do some hundred so, some kind of 3d rendering but for for general purpose usually you you should use the the lower uh, lod so uh, maybe the the bim content doesn't need to be that pretty uh, after all uh, the other thing uh, uh, which actually we need to also cover when it comes to to the bim content and its origins is that um, very often it's not standardized and it's very hard to be compared so let's say it sometimes it's even it's hard to be compared across the product which comes from the the same manufacturer because let's let's just imagine that the manufacturer uh, or their creation of their bim libraries uh, at more than one uh, service provider uh, we, and all of these service provider that prepares the BIM content for this particular manufacturer use different naming convention of the attributes, um, different types of, of, of uh, structurizing the data. Not mentioned the, comparing the, the BIM content across several manufacturers is it's actually uncomparable because, because in great majority the, the, there is no strict standard of of naming the attributes actually there are several ones which i will tell tell you about later on but uh, it's still more like a headache uh, especially uh, for many manufacturers to consider the bim content as mainly geometry and not the structural uh, structuralized uh, set of product information and of course why this uh, service provider that prefers pro prepares the uh, the bim content uh, for the manufacturer do it this way of course for money it's better to to create something which requires more maintenance than something which is pretty much reusable and uh, uh, um, can be somehow easy to be compared in the end let's face it everything comes with the price the BIM content is created um, by or provided by manufacturers and created by service provider always for money. Okay, and I think that uh, this is a very good quote that I also found on the LinkedIn and I, I wanted to share with you whether the BIM content is actually necessary for manufacturer to have, whether uh, this the, the content actually generates sales. I think that uh, there are many, let's say, possible answers for this question and some of them may quarrel uh, or, uh, and and uh, and challenge one another that it actually generates sales or it doesn't generate sales i don't want it to answer this question right now because um, because there is no perfect answer for that but uh, i think that the answer that that you see on the current slide is pretty much safe and uh, and i definitely agree with that so it doesn't matter whether the, the BIM content actually generates sales or not. I think that it's matter that from the manufacturer perspective, if they don't provide it, well, it could be really embarrassing. Okay, so uh, we we'll actually finish the, the, the origins of the BIM content, uh, the origins of the BIM libraries. Mm, so uh, are there any questions till now? Would you like me to, to clarify something? Everything is clear. Shall we proceed? I'm waiting something right, like 10 seconds. If I don't see that uh, uh, someone is typing, then, then I will move on. Okay, I see that someone is typing, so I will wait a bit. Okay, it's clear, okay. Uh, okay, so, so let's move on. All clear, Roger that. How we can use the BIM content. Okay, when it comes to the uh, utilization, let's focus on the BIM acronym at the very beginning. So the BIM states from building information modeling. Sometimes it's also explained as building information management. To be honest, I like the second acronym more because then uh, we don't have uh, the modeling word inside, which somehow suggests the, the geometry uh, on which the, the manufacturers, and not only the manufacturers, many, 
uh, many BIM users are actually focusing on. So the, the, the geometry, which I think is not the most relevant. I think that the I letter is, is the most relevant. And if we change the modeling to management, then, then it can even increase the, the importance of, of the letter I. And I would consider that geometry as a subset of information. And to be honest, if we navigate back to the slide from the beginning of the presentation, when we're when we are explaining the, the what is the BIM content, uh, that is a, it is a combination of geometry and the information, I would say that only the, the information is, is mandatory, while the, the geometry is pretty much optional uh, as uh, as i mentioned before there can there are some there are some objects there are some libraries which has no geometry at all they take the the the, the insulation materials in general materials paints and and so on so uh, uh, the next slide actually comes from a uh, from a quite interesting article that was uh, presented by rafael mus uh, rafael mus is a friend of mine who uh, who works uh, at, at Aliaxis Group, one of the largest uh, um, uh, piping fittings manufacturer in the world, which uh, actually uh, owns, uh, I think, over 30 different brands. Some of you might be uh, familiar with, some of them maybe not, because they are actually available all, all over the world. Uh, Rafa was actually creates a very nice article. Uh, I call it a catharsis for the BIM content, explaining, explaining for which purposes and how this beam content should be prepared uh, here is the also the link to the article um, if you uh, if you see it uh, I definitely recommend you to to read it afterwards but let's get back to the slide as you can see um, uh, this uh, this slide actually presents the the, the necessity of creating the the beam um, the beam uh, uh, content uh, for for particular types of products. And as you can see, if we're navigating back, uh, more to, to the products which are more configurable, like for instance, map components, uh, which has some connection points, which are very much parametric, it makes more sense to, to create the BIM content for, for those which uh, are pretty much fixed, like for instance, sanitary, which usually has the same dimensions. Maybe this content is not that much relevant. Maybe, maybe we just need to to inject uh, some 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 sort of a product information. But still, there is some demand on that because in the end, the the, the sanitary can also have some connection connection points. So, uh, just for your information, definitely recommend you to to check the this uh, article uh, written by by. Uh, Rafa Moose, which I also had a pleasure to review before going live. Okay, uh, I also mentioned once that uh, uh, in the in the the first part of of the session that uh, there is no let's say standard of naming convention for the attributes within the BIM files. Actually, there there is one, and it's uh, it's called uh, Uniclass. It's uh, Sometimes it uh, some, somehow it it uh, it actually standardized the the way the the products should be classified because of course we're talking about the let's say maybe maybe not not only the standards but also the classification system. So we have the Uniclass, but this is not the only one available on the market. Believe me, there are many of them. Many of them, different countries. In some countries, even more than than uh, one. So um, if uh, if manufacturers would like to support all of them, it could be a hassle, uh, especially if they they are present on several markets where different markets use different uh, classification or, or standardization systems. It might be an issue for them to actually prepare uh, the, the the BIM libraries, their BIM content to meet the market needs. Because for instance the uh, I don't know the the weight in in e team uh, classification standard uh, has a specific e f o o o four five seven I don't know uh, code and and in in B meta or 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 within e class uh, it states something completely completely different. So how uh, how we can sort that out? Actually, building smart helped us a bit with that by providing something yeah so the this could cause something like a pain 
uh, in the eyes of the manufacturer, but the building smart came with some sort of uh, a support for us, something which is called the BSDD, which states from building smart data dictionary. And the BSDD is, you can consider that as a Google Translate. So uh, you can provide a classification, a standardization uh, within one endpoint, convert it to some other type of classification. You can even create your own classification system, but because maybe you have some specific internal requirement that requires you that the, for instance, weight or height or, or depth or whatever um, should be named in this and not the other way around. You can then upload your, uh, your own uh, specification, your own uh, standardization system into the BSDD, which later on allows you to convert, uh, let's say, for instance, eTeam data to your own system. So there are some solutions already available on the market, and they are completely free of charge, uh, even an open source, like uh, when it comes to all the uh, building smart uh, uh, solutions, for instance, the IFC is the another example of, of the open standard uh, of the open BIM. So uh, there are already available solutions which simplify us dealing with the product information, also the ones, especially the ones that are included within the BIM content. Okay, so uh, where we should look for the BIM content? This is something that, uh, that uh, I would also like you to answer. So I will create, I will create the poll and waiting for your feedback. All right, the Google search wins. Okay, I'm quite surprised with the with the result, although I, well, maybe not surprised uh, because actually I, I would maybe look for a similar, uh, similar uh, approach. Maybe, maybe I would probably sc uh, score manufacturer sites a bit higher. I will present you the, the results from uh, from the same question uh, which I got from the, the LinkedIn group. So give me a sec. I will share my screen because I don't have a slide like that. Um, okay. So uh, if you see my screen, uh, you see the results that I got from, from the BIM uh, experts. So uh, the great the majority of the, uh, the users are looking for the BIM content on the BIM portals and manufacturer websites. I think that this is, uh, this is actually 60%. If we count it together with Google search, then, then we have 80% of the market. Mm, so the BIM portals itself uh, uh, collects uh, less than, than uh, 50%, but still quite, quite a lot. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, on my LinkedIn uh, poll, uh, we had something like 30% uh, of the feedback, uh, uh, which refers to uh, to manufacturer site. Here we have it only 19. Uh, um, to be honest, uh, manufacturer sites are, are very much popular. Uh, and uh, according to specified by, they are the second, the second most uh, commonly used uh, source of the product information and also the BIM content right after technical specs. So, uh, so in, in, in general, it seems that the manufacturer sites are, except the, the, the technical spec, most, uh, let's say, trusted uh, source of the true. And there is one uh, reasonable explanation of that, which is the the, the manufacturer are always close, closer to the source of the information. When we're talking about the, some external BIM portals, uh, well, I think that the manufacturers are, are the one that knows the best the, the product information of their products. And I think that the, the planners thinks pretty much the same. And uh, when it comes to, to another quite interesting uh, statistics uh, that refers to the BIM content, uh, which was conducted by the UK uh, BIM Alliance uh, from 2018. The greatest issue that there is no data structure. So it's more like a freestyle when it comes to the naming convention of the attributes and, and what product information should be included within the BIM content and which shouldn't. Um, in the meantime, we have some uh, example. Uh, oh, 
uh, one person actually uh, stated the, the name of some additional uh, of some BIM portals, uh, activity, BIM objects, uh, there is also NBS. There are several others, one believe it or not. Within the UK, uh, in addition to NBS, there is also a BIM store, which is also quite popular. E even in Poland, we have several ones like Archispace or, uh, or Archiapp. Uh, in uh, in Benelux and in Dach, uh, also there is a, a portal uh, which uh, is owned by Trimble uh, called Map Content. Uh, on this, in Switzerland, uh, you have another portal which called which is called Build Up, and uh, in in the US you have Unify. Okay, so uh, so even if you would consider uh, as a manufacturer to to be present. Uh, on several markets, and you would like to rely on the, on the portals, on the BIM portals, probably you would need to uh, work with more than one because depending on the uh, depending on the the market, uh, the the popularity of particular portal is more or uh, bigger or or smaller. For instance, BIM Objects uh, in Poland uh, has a, a relatively small market share, but on the other hand, they are the the, the biggest one when it comes to the international range. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so where to look the BIM content? I think I, I, I already answered this question. This is the, the screen that, that they presented at the very beginning of the presentation. I still believe that the BIM content, the most available BIM content will be present on the manufacturer side from the very, let's say, pragmatic reason. It's because the manufacturer are always most up to date with its own product information. And uh, it's more likely that the manufacturer has, uh, let's say, more updated product information than some third parties. Uh, that's why I, I, I would definitely uh, recommend to download the content from the manufacturer sites rather than from the BIM portals, because you never know whether it's up to date or not. And uh, when it comes to updating the, the, the BIM content, I think that this is also a challenge for the manufacturer. I think this is one of the greatest challenge. Uh, why the BIM content should be updated? Well, there are several reasons. And uh, uh, the, the reason related with uh, changing of the regulation, especially the legal regulation in particular countries, changing in, let's say, technology, construct, uh, production technology, uh, changing in uh, some requirements from the market. Maybe the market requires uh, uh, some some additional features which are available within the BIM object, uh, some additional information which is available in the BIM object, and uh, it could cause a maintenance hell. So sometimes manufacturers really want to create a great BIM object, but they don't know how to maintain it. And I'm not sure whether probably most of you don't remember. Even I was uh, I was too young to remember that. In the the late 70s. There was this 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 huge competition between the VS, uh, VHS uh, the data format for the video cassette and, uh, and the Betamax, which was definitely a better solution, but more expensive. And in the long run, it lost the competition with the the VHS. And uh, I think that the the key to uh, to actually have a good content quality is to be, have possibility to maintain it proper, pro um, properly to sustain the proper set of product information within the within the content and not to make it a, an expensive uh, solution um, uh, which usually is uh, related with manual update of the 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 product information done by some service provider this is always the greatest challenge with it caused the delays it caused the u u error uh, use um, human error mistakes, and it's relatively expensive because the human work, the human labor is always the the the, the weakest link. So, what the standard approach looks like uh, on the manufacturer side when it comes to preparing the BIM content? So, first of all, someone needs to prepare the the the, the BIM file. So. So uh, if we're referring to geometrical uh, content, then someone needs to prepare the geometry. If we're talking about the non-geometrical content like materials, someone still needs to prepare the BIM, the BIM object and uh, place some product information inside it. Usually this information is being placed manually by, by the service providers or by some internal uh, department of the manufacturer if they, the, the manufacturer decided to create the BIM libraries on its own. And then they, they place it somewhere uh, they place it somewhere on, uh, within the uh, within the internet, like uh, BIM portals, their own sites, name it, 
from which the designers can can fetch this this information from. However, this solution doesn't necessarily need meet the actual needs that the manufacturer needs to meet, especially if he's dealing with different users, if he's dealing with different markets, and if he's dealing with different communication channels. So, so you need to understand that that manufacturers are trying to reach several types of of personas uh, of of uh, of decision makers which makes a call whether the the uh, the product of particular manufacturer should be bought or not so what are the users so one of them are, are of course architects or planners designers some 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 bim um, bim specialist that prepares the bim uh, that prepares the BIM uh, project, but not only. It can also be some some installers. So for instance, if I'm an installer of, of of heat pumps, or if I'm an installer of of, of stoves, um, or any kind of, of of solar panels, name it. I might uh, uh, have some sort of uh, an agreement with a manufacturer that if I recommend your a manufactured product i get some some I, I will be somehow rewarded so these are of course also the uh, the the users the the potential decision makers the manufacturer would like to outreach uh, don't forget about the investors that uh, in the end gives the money they, they would also uh, the investor is also a a persona to which the manufacturer is trying to uh, to provide some some marketing communication so each and every of these uh, different types of user are actually using a different marketing communication channel uh, so for the designers for the planners for the bim expert uh, as you guys uh, probably is going to to be in a several uh, uh, months or, or years the, the best way to 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 reach this kind of audience is by preparing the bim content and and uh, sharing them within the the specific bim platform file formats so this is the so this is the the channel that that uh, uh, that would reach you but the the investor for instance in most cases is not able to to open the the revit file because it, it doesn't even have revit or or archicad or any other uh, bim uh, authority tool uh, but maybe they would be more interested in uh, in checking the, the the 3d visualization of of the of the the content in a form of some virtual reality or maybe augmented reality uh, on the other hand installers might be more interested in in having maybe some sort of a mobile app which uh, also explains the the instruction manuals how to assemble how to service the products uh, and so on so each of these each of these uh, end users uh, might be interested in slightly different set of information using slightly different or completely different communication channels and uh, manufacturer should uh, keep in mind that across all of these channels the data that they are offering should be synchronized it shouldn't be the case that uh, if a manufacturer provides some content within let's say instruction manual for the installers it contains a different set of information than the content that is provided to the architects uh, or, or, or any other uh, designers. Actually, I, I had a friend of, uh, who, who, who is an architect and she was uh, once uh, designing a, a giant and gigantic shopping mall in Poland uh, where they were using a fire protection gates uh, uh, to to actually uh, cut down the, the the fire in the in 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 some unexpected uh, uh, event, and uh, the problem was that uh, the the content that the, the architect actually took uh, from the manufacturer side was not up to date, and believe it or not, it ended up in actually um, let's say renting uh, some gigantic. Uh, machine uh, which was shipped from from i think as i think as far as i remember from scandinavia to forge over 200 concrete forged walls so having the bim content uh, with the up to date information is substantial because the you know it, it's very hard to fix these mistakes later on that's why manufacturer needs to came up with the idea of 
updating the product information in a smooth and rapid way to always be in sync with all the other channels of information that they share uh, share it with with other users and within bim streamer we decided to actually simplify this process by actually providing the product information into the bim files in a, an automated way so uh, at the very beginning uh, when i was showing you that we need a uh, that the BIM content is actually the, the, the information and the, the 3D geometry. It's pretty much the same uh, uh, when it comes to the flow of how the BIM streamer works. So the idea is that we are connecting to manufacturer product information and we're also providing 3D geometry, uh, which can be considered as a template file, which has no specific product information. And in within the system, which we call the back office, you can consider that as an admin panel, we're merging this information together with the product information, creating language independent, region independent, user persona independent BIM files. This is quite important because the BIM files might differ across different region. Just name the just take language for instance. The language might be German, English, Polish, Russian, whatever. But also the specific uh, classification system I mentioned at the very beginning. So some of the regions might be more interested in 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 having a neat team classification. For instance, Benelux. Maybe some other ones might be more interested in being compliant with some German standard like E class or or BIM Meta. Mm, uh, or maybe co class, which is more popular in Sweden. Don't forget that the BIM content also needs to be used uh, not only for for the design phase, uh, uh, but also for the construction and in the end for the facility management. But also don't forget that the content uh, and the, the product uh, of the manufacturer actually evolves. So um, by 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 talking about the evolution of the product. I'm talking about the new versions of the product. So the manufacturer, once they release some new version of the product or they discontinue some, some product line and replace it with some, some new one, they still should be able to provide a historical BIM content on demand. Why? Are you familiar with Digital Twins? Uh, have, you, have you heard uh, about that? Give me a sec, I will create a poll uh, for that. So who? heard about the digital twins. Okay, most of you uh, are not familiar with the digital twins, so I will uh, give you a short intro. So uh, there are some projects which uh, were not prepared within BIM, but uh, right now we would like to BIMify them. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know the better uh, exp expression for this. This particular, uh, this particular word. So uh, the the idea is uh, to create a digital representation of the already existing um, object. Uh, let's say construction, even though it wasn't prepared in the BIM. Why we we need to have that? Uh, mainly for facility management. Do, are you familiar what the facility management is? Okay, I'm starting the poll again. Are you familiar with the uh, what the FM is? Publish the poll. Uh, okay, so the great majority of you uh, uh, is not aware what the facility management is. Okay, so so the BIM is actually used not only for the the planning, not only for the construction, but also for the facility management. Who is the facility manager? Is the person that is responsible for the administration of the building, for instance, or for the administration of the road. road. Uh, the person who who knows um, that uh, different, uh, let's say. Uh, components of the building needs to be serviced. Uh, they need to check if there are some incidents, like you know, there are some problems with the hydraulics, with the plumbing, uh, there, are, there are some floods uh, within, the, within the cellar, or maybe the, 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 the stove needs to be somehow serviced and so on. So if they, they would have the, um, the, the digital representation of the object of the, the the whole construction, say for instance, a digital representation of a hospital, which uh, uh, contains all the actual products uh, which were used, which which windows, which doors, which uh, I don't know even lift shafts or or even a paint. Um, they know, for instance, that if someone breaks the glass, 
uh, they know which which uh, manufacturer uh, and which uh, let's say um, window uh, um, parameters are relevant uh, to to replace the, the the broken broken item or they are created uh, some sort of a uh, a renovated uh, renovation within one of the the wings of the hospital and they need to have the the exact same paint so they also can take that from the product information which is available within the digital twin and uh, believe it or not uh, in the you know in the 16th or 17th century when they were building the Notre Dame cathedral they had no idea what the beam was that's why they they created uh, the, the digital representation of the the Notre Dame uh, cathedral and they they right now is planning to rebuild it thanks to this uh, thanks to that so so the digital twins and the facility management are very important when it comes to the bim and and especially important uh, um, because let's just imagine that someone bought a product let's say 5 years ago the product evolved so if uh, if now someone would like to create a digital twin which includes that product uh, then he needs to get the product from 5 years back that's why manufacturers should not only provide the always up to date product information but on demand they should also provide the historical version of their bim libraries and uh, this is also a challenge which uh, most of the manufacturers uh, not even think of and in, in the context of of fm in the context of, of 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 digital twin it is very important and last but not least is to make this product uh, pr this this content somehow available so the planners can download it and as i mentioned you before the the the, the content can be uh, available on different bim portals maybe on the manufacturer site mm, uh, recently i, I also uh, heard the this trend of of sharing the bim con content with the wholesalers which in the end uh, wants to to sell the 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 manufacturer products to to the actual uh, large investment so the 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 wholesalers is actually some 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 new i would say distribution channel for the bim content which uh, i think will enter the market sooner than than we expect i see that there is some comment uh, here so give me a sec uh, may i ask a question yes go ahead so so on that on that if you would like to ask something go ahead if you have another question just uh, write them uh, down within the chat window and and we will try to answer them a Revit, what does BIM library mean? A Revit file which includes uh, all families inside. Uh, no, actually the, the the BIM the BIM library the BIM, the BIM okay. So uh, Revit might, uh, might contains uh, can can present can have the libraries uh, in uh, in two types of well maybe three types of files because there is also uh, RTE which is the Revit templates for non geometric one. There is an RVT for, uh, let's say, a standard components like, for instance, pipes. Uh, and uh, there, there is uh, also the, the RFA, which states from Revit family, where you can uh, have a specific uh, product. But within these products, you can also have different types of the products. So let's say, uh, let's say I have something like a, like a window or a door. Maybe this is a pretty simple example. I might have a door, which might be available in three vi variants, let's say, uh with uh with the with the width uh 60 70 and 80 so within the revit family i might have a three types uh so three variants of of the doors but still this is the same file uh, where i can select uh, the, the specific product variant that i'm interested in so so the revit family is, is definitely a, a a part of the library that your library may contain several files uh, which may contain different different uh, revit families okay are there another questions so so please uh, go ahead with your question and i will forward uh, I, I will follow with the next slide right now i will um uh, I, I will present you some some demo uh, so this um, this actually ends the the theoretical part uh, right now we will more focus on the more more practical one but before before we do that uh, i will uh, again ask if there are some other questions because we've just finished the, the second stage of of our today's lecture and uh, i'm more than happy to to get some 
some question from from this fight uh, i will wait something like five seconds if there are no further questions i will just proceed with the demo examples so five four three two one all right okay so uh, i don't see any other questions so uh, let's start with the with the demo the first demo uh, is going to present you how uh, within the bim streamer we're injecting the the data into the bim files okay so in order to do that i need to start the youtube video so give me a sec okay so i will start i will start presenting the uh, the actual uh, the actual uh, video. So as you can see right now, I, I'm presenting you the Excel sheet where which contains the product information. Within this Excel sheet, we will change some uh, some product information, which um, later on uh, will be updated within within the BIM content. And uh, here you can also see that the, the information can be provided in different languages. So so uh, especially if you would like to provide the BIM content for different uh, regions for different uh, for different countries, different languages, different classification system, it's actually possible. We're of course using here a, a Excel sheet for the simplicity. Uh, usually, manufacturer has some sort of a, 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 a system for storing their own product information, which uh, in most cases, uh, which are in most cases located in the in the uh, let's say system called PIM which states from product information management, but they can also be located in, in the systems like ERP, uh, enterprise resource planning, PDM, product uh, data management, uh, PLM, product lifecycle management, T uh, TIM, uh, technical information management, and many, many others, SAP, and, and, and so on. Right now, uh, we've uploading the uh, we've uploaded the, the 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 data we've uploaded the the bim um the bim master file so let's combine the the uploaded bim master file with the 3d uh, the 3d geometry of the bim master file with the the product information that are available within the excel sheet You can see right now the BIM streamer is processing, injecting the data into the BIM uh, into the BIM file, but not only injecting the data, but it it also generates different file formats. In this case, we have this uh, the switcher, the light switcher, but as you can see here, it also contains the geometry, uh, sorry, the, the the metadata that we've also uh, taken from uh, from the Excel sheet. We've also generated this uh, this uh, this gallery that you see on the right hand side and also this 360 degrees view in addition to that we've generated different 3d version of the file so in addition to rfa we also generated ifc sat and so on and as you can see here uh, you can find the the data which initially comes from the excel sheet so the original bim content uh, was not provided with the product information it was relatively empty and right now, thanks to the BIM streamer, these data uh, are being injected uh, in a different language version in an, out, uh, in an automated way. You may consider why we can not just do that uh, manually within the Revit, for instance, or, or Archicad, or, or, uh, or in another BIM platform that we would like to use. Well, for, let's say, one or two languages, when we need to provide uh, three or four different attributes, it's doable. But let's just imagine uh, a situation where manufacturer needs to be available on, let's say, I don't know, 30 different markets, uh, needs to provide any information in 20 different languages, it provides something like, uh, I don't know, several thousand products, um, and, uh, and each and every product should contain several hundred attributes and try to do that manually. Yeah. So it, it could be it could be a challenge if if you don't have this uh, process somehow streamlined and and also control that uh, there are no mistakes because uh, the the another issue related with uh, with manual update of the product information is of course uh, the the human errors 
the cost of the the human labor uh, and and of course the time uh, for the update so here you you see the, the content which can be for instance placed on the manufacturer site uh, it, it it also contains all the 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 gallery views uh, all the 360 degrees views that we generated within uh, within the admin panel and uh, and uh, right now the 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 designer can actually download something like that and place that within their own project so um this is the, the 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 idea of how the back office looks like, but I will tell you something. Uh, what we did together with uh, Poznan University of Technology, which actually was uh, was prepared based on the BIM streamer data injection and based on the model, based on the the the, the object, the, the the library object that was prepared by one of uh, actually by by two uh, university students. Uh, we're together with uh, two other companies. One, uh, Maddeco, who is a who is a manufacturer of the uh, of the different type of concrete uh, elements, and uh, GS1, who is the uh, the company which is responsible for giving the GTIN uh, numbers. I won't let's say talk about GTIN on today's session because this could be more like a topic for a completely separate uh, webinar for a completely separate. Uh, let's say lecture but all these four entities uh, came up together and allowed two of the the university students to actually prepare their diploma thesis within the diploma thesis um, uh, the, the students prepare the bim library uh, they also prepare the excel sheet with the product information both bim library and the excel sheet uh, was then uploaded into the bim streamer platform combine it together and uh, and uh, present it into the the special uh, online library prepared by bim streamer to to poznan university of technology everything was uh, conducted by uh, professor glema uh, with whom we are currently is, um, trying to introduce the bim streamer as uh, as a platform uh, that can help you uh, in the next semester create BIM content, manage the BIM content, and use this content within your projects. So, how it looked like uh, here you have some screenshot taken from the diploma uh, thesis uh, of two students. Uh, on the right hand side, you also see the photos of, of me. Uh, Professor Glema, uh, Zbyszek Rusinek from uh, GS1, uh, uh, Maciek Maćkowiak, who, who was one of the students um, that uh, that was preparing the the, the diploma thesis, and uh, and also uh, uh, Jacek Tomczak, Tomczak from uh, PAP24, uh, one of the uh, one of the person that actually uh, get me acquainted with with uh, professor glema and help us to to complete this whole this whole project and uh, as i mentioned before at the very beginning uh, we created uh, or or the student created a, a a concrete pot in revit in the form of the rfa so revit family it also provided the the excel uh, containing the data these data later on were, were combined uh, in a form of a uh, of uh, of the bim file uh, thanks to the under undergoing revit and generated the, the ready-made revit file containing both the geometry and the data from the excel sheet and right now i will show you uh, how it looked like give me a sec i need to take the uh, i need to take the uh, i need to share the screen once again Okay, share it. Okay, let me know whether you can see it. So now I'm navigating to to Beam Streamer demo uh, demo uh, library. I need to change, I think, to 
Poland, as far as I remember. Yeah, and here is the concrete pot that was prepared by, by the student. Uh, you see, uh, we've generated 360 degrees view of the pot. Uh, we've also generated uh, different, uh, different views, everything in an automated way. All this information that you see here are also available uh, within the Revit file. Uh, I can also change the language, for instance, to Polish uh, to to show you that the the information that was provided were available in more than one uh, than one language. But due to the fact that this this webinar is in English, let's switch back to to English again. And and if I would like that, I I would be able to, for instance, download this this product in different file formats, which were also generated. That this is also something that I mentioned about. Um, so. Uh, uh, we were generate. We, we not only generated the, the Revit file. Uh, actually, we generated the Revit file in two versions in 2019 and 2020, both in Polish and English. Uh, in addition to that, we also generated different other file formats like uh, 2D WG, 3D WG, DXF, IFC, uh, SAT, FBX, and OBJ, OBJ, which is used for this 360 degrees view that you see, uh, that you see right now. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is one option that uh, that you can play with uh, with the BIM content. So so let's just imagine that uh, that on on one of your pro projects uh, you need to prepare some BIM libraries, uh, which later on you you upload to to the to, for instance the Poznan University of Technology library, um, and then some other student may use your content for some of their project. And download the library of BIM Streamer free. Uh, yeah, so so right now this is this. I think that Onad is 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 going a bit uh, further with uh, with our, the idea that we have with uh, together with uh, uh, with Professor Glema. Uh, the idea that we have is to to set up a, a dedicated BIM Streamer library uh, solution, uh, not only for the Poznan University of Technology, but we're thinking more globally, uh, or at least uh, yeah. we're thinking more. On the European level, so we're thinking about uh, setting up uh, the platform where different technical university across the, the U, uh, across the Europe would be able to uh, push uh, their BIM content and also share this BIM content with other universities for uh, for the educational uh, possibilities. But I will talk about that uh, a bit later. A bit later on. I, I right now I showed you how we could uh, how we could download the the BIM libraries directly from the the website, but there are some other options to to download the the library which I'm about to present you right now. So give me a, a sec. Uh, right now I will show you the video, not the real uh, uh, not the real uh, screen share. All right, and here is the example of the BIM Streamer plugin. BIM Streamer plugin allows you to actually fetch the very same content as you see uh, within the web uh, within the the website, but you you can do that directly from your BIM software. In this case, we're presenting, the, of course, the Revit plugin uh, as the most popular uh, software, um, uh, even according to 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 our poll that we have on today's session so so here we are actually downloading the very same uh, the very same pot uh, and uh, you can uh, right now open uh, the properties of the pot within the within revit and you can na navigate to to the attributes that we actually injected so as you can see here you can find the attributes that were available within the, the Excel sheet. So this is an, uh, one of the options. Mm, uh, this is another option that we can use uh, for, uh, for showing the, uh, the geometry. I think uh, the, for downloading the contents, uh, apology. Uh, can we modify the attributes? Yes, in general, we can modify the attributes within the Revit, uh, but uh, if we modify the attributes within the Revit only, we will see that. If we modify the attributes within the BIM streamer, everyone that downloads this content will see that. So this is the, 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 the main difference. Mm, okay, I will show you another, another video of how we could share the content 
with someone else. Uh, not sure whether you remember uh, at the, the beginning uh, of the presentation, I, I told you that the manufacturer is, is trying to reach different uh, different end users. Some of them might be interested in, in, uh, in using the website. Some of them might be interested in using some BIM plugin. And some of them, like for instance, installers or, um, or, uh, or investors might be more interested in using the web app. The installers might be interested in using the web app because, uh, especially if they are on the construction site, they might not even have the connection to internet, so they are not able to navigate to the website. But uh, the web app, which uh, which can work even offline, may also provide them with the, the information. Here you can also see that we have this 360 degrees view, the very same one as we we seen uh, on the website. But we can use this this generated content for different purposes. We can actually place it on the ground using the augmented reality. What's more, due to the fact that we're able to control the geometry through the data, we can upload, up, uh, update, for instance, our Excel sheet, upload it again into the BIM streamer, and regenerate a new content containing a different geometry, and later on also use it for the augmented reality as you can see right now we're also changing the, the the languages so 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 from from the perspective of of manufacturers and uh, and from the perspective of different regions different languages this is also quite uh, quite convenient um but uh, i think that th this would be pretty it when it comes to the when it comes to the diploma thesis, yeah, here, here, I forgot about this slide. So, so we were presenting it in the website, mobile app, and of course, Revit plugin. But uh, maybe before we finish this this today's session, I will also show you how it be it is being used in the real case scenario by the real manufacturers, because I think that this might be even more interesting for you. So, give me a sec. I will share my screen again and share it right now and uh, give me okay i think it's on i will navigate to uponor site uponor is one of the the biggest uh, hvac manufacturers uh, 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 especially in in the context of the piping and fittings and i will present you their uh, their bim library so as you can see, it's uh, it looks very similar to our demo library because in the end everything runs, of course, on um, on Beam Streamer. Uh, so currently uh, at Uponor, we're generating and updating over 80,000, 80,000, so eight and four zeros, different Beam and CAD files. Actually, not not sure whether it's 80,000. Probably it's even more because uh, these are the data from the beginning of February, but. Uh, we're generating and updating quite a huge, massive number of product information and the BIM content for 30 countries. Over 30 countries. I don't, I don't remember the exact. I don't know the exact number of the countries, uh, but I, uh, I know that it's over 30 countries. It's over, um, it's over 30, uh, 20 uh, languages. And uh, if we navigate, for instance, uh, down down the uh, the hierarchy of their products, let's just uh, open, for instance, the the valves, uh, or or maybe maybe not the valve. Maybe I will open the this one, oh, the viral. This this is pretty cool. So uh, check check this out. Uh, here you you have a BIM content. Uh, of 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 the Uponor Vario S main fold, and you have a several possible variants of this content within the specific product family. Let's let me show you what happens if we change the variant. Do you see that there are more uh, connections over here because we changed the variant, and uh, this was possible thanks to the fact that we pre uh, the, the 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 BIM content was prepared in a in a very smart way. Uh, and uh, together with the together with the product information that were injected by by the beam streamer we managed to generate different versions of the, the this beam content in a completely automated way so uh, this is one of the example how 
how we can use the the beam streamer for uh, generating and managing the content um i will stop sharing this uh, this presentation right now because i wanted to also present you some uh, some other ways so uh, so we were talking about uh, the websites uh, of the manufacturer but we were also talking about the the revit plugin so let's see how the revit plugin of uponor uh, looks like uh, i will start sharing my video here again and uh, here is the the uponor mm, here is the the uponor uh, sorry not this one uh, Revit catalog, did I open the correct one? I think I, uh... yeah, sorry, this is not the, the video I was, uh, I wanted to show, so stop sharing it. I will uh, open the, I will open the video. Give me a sec, on our website tools, login. Mm, okay, I will start sharing my screen, that would be easier. Uh share it all right and here i i will show you the uponor uh the uponor uh, video presenting their uh, their own revit plugin which they also uh, provides to uh, to the to the planners that would like to use the the uponor uh, product portfolio it looks very similar to their site but the the, the main difference is that it's available directly from from Revit, you can specify the country, you can specify the language that you're interested in. Uh, maybe I will scroll it uh, further uh, to save some time. Uh, and you can, uh, of course, uh, select some specific products and place them directly uh, within uh, within your project, within your within your design. So uh, this is pretty pretty cool. I'm not sure whether it's 100% justified to have your own plugin. Uh, I think that if you wanted to provide a, a plugin, you should convince the designers to, to, to download it by offering them some super feature. And we developed uh, this super feature for Uponor, which I'm about to present you right now, and uh, in the form of, of a very short video. So, uh yeah here is the uponor uh, here is the uponor uh here is the revit sorry and within the revit you see that that there is just a default pipe piping system available but let's use the uponor plugin that works with the beam streamer and let's upload a different piping system uh from uh from the uponor product portfolio so we're selecting the system pipe types we're also selecting some some fittings uh, and now we will create the system by uploading this configuration directly uh, into revit and uh, what happens then okay so the system got up uh, got uh, got loaded into the um, into the revit uh, software and uh, yeah, so it's loading, loading, loading. You need to give him some time. Yeah, pipe system created successfully. And now if we navigate back to the pipes, we see that we don't have only the default one, but we you have also the Uponor one. And we can start literally drawing the installation with the Uponor systems. And this is quite interesting because if we connect two pipes, the appropriate band, so the appropriate fitting is being injected automatically adapted to specific uh, diameters also the t junction uh, the t's are, were also injected uh, in an automated way thanks to thanks to the piping system that was uh, um, provided through the uponor um, plugin directly into the uh, into the designers projects and i think this is something which might be interesting for uh, for someone who might not be 100% sure to install the plugin, but with a super features, like for instance, this one, uh, it might be more relevant for, for them. Of course, uh, we, uh, if you would be interested in hearing more about the Uponor uh, case, I definitely recommend you to, to navigate to our site. I, I'm uh, typing it right now, beamstreamer.com. 
uh, navigate to the knowledge uh, section uh, and then, then you should find the webinar link where you can find the recordings from our different uh, webinars that we are hosting uh, online. And one of the webinars actually presents the, 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 the case where together with Michał Leziński, a head of, 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 UPO, of BIM at Uponor, presents their, their, uh, their new BIM platform. But uh, this is not uh, the end. I would, like to, uh, I would like to also give you some sort of a summary at the very end so that you can bury it in the back of your head before you, uh, you leave the, this lecture. So the, the topic number one, the BIM objects, the BIM content, um doesn't mean that it that you are BIM ready you might prepare uh, let's say not very good quality content because you are focusing on the geometry rather than on the information you're focusing on the, uh, more on how the the content looks like rather than uh, how you can use it or how whether it's parametric whether it has connection points so it's very important to know that if you have a BIM object you might not have a good it, it doesn't mean that you have a bit good BIM content. So the other important fact is that geometry is just a subset of the BIM content because there can be a content without the geometry at all. Geometry is optional. Paint doesn't need the geometry. Structural layers doesn't need uh, don't need any geometry. Materials don't need any geometry, but still it is a BIM content. And information is mandatory. Some some of the content which is a lack of uh, information, I would I wouldn't consider that as a BIM. I would more consider that as 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 BIM level one, which is CAT. Uh, so uh, the BIM is information, and 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 we need to keep that in mind. And uh, it's also important to manage this information within the BIM content in an easy way, and to make sure that they are always up to date it's very important especially when it comes to the construction projects where the, there is no uh, space for potential mistakes and uh, what, what's the next uh, when, when it comes to to to, to beam streamer well actually we're planning to closer collaboration with poznan university of technology hopefully with other universities uh, as well that might be interested in in uh, in using beam streamer platform for uh, for managing their beam content uh, the, the idea is that we would like to create uh, some sort of a, an educational BIM content platform where, where uh, students from different universities could, uh, could actually provide the content and this content can be used by, uh, by other uh, students uh, from the same universities or, or from also from the others. And uh, yeah, so if, uh, if there are some uh, people from uh, from different universities. Actually, this this is something that I didn't even ask. Is there someone else uh, than uh, than from the Poznan Universities of Technology on today's lecture, or we have only the representative of, of Poznan University? Mm, okay, I see that the the no one is typing, so probably the the oh, someone is typing. Um, okay, so uh, so if if there is someone uh, from different universities, I would be also interested to 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 find out about that. Okay, I just think it's Poland. Uh, okay. So anyway, the, the uh, oh, there is someone from uh, from Szczecin. Okay, so uh, so it seems that we Poznan is not the only uh on the universities available here okay so when it comes to the the the, the educational uh, proposal for the universities uh, well we actually uh, set up already some sort of a letter of intents with uh, two large technical universities in poland one's in in, in Gliwice and the other one in, in poznan the idea is to to actually uh, create a joint uh, a joint uh, platform and uh, also if there, if there are some other universities that might be interested in the project, we, we are more than welcome to, to join uh, our common project. And, uh, and uh, the idea is to help students create the content, uh, use the content in their project, and use the content of other students in their projects, and share this content with the other uh, students and with the other universities. Um, the, thanks to that, it would be easier for you as a students to, to, to actually 
work with the content work with the BIM projects. Uh, you could also run some different uh, diploma thesis uh, 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 on, on that base. And um, last but not least, uh, when it comes to the collaboration between BIM Streamer and the, uh, the, uh, the universities, we're also open for the lectures like the one that I, I, that I was uh, having today with you guys. And um, from, this, uh, from this place, I would also like to invite you for the second lecture that will take place uh, within the week from now. We're together with two of my colleagues. Uh, we will present you uh, six different uh, content creation strategies for, I think, two most popular BIM platforms, which is Revit and, and Archicad. So uh, in, in general, we will present six strategies for two platforms, which gives us 12 examples. 12 different examples in, in total. So if you're interested in the BIM libraries, if you're interested in the BIM content, in the BIM content I definitely recommend you to, uh, to take part in, in, in this lecture, which took place on the 13th of May. So uh, exactly within the week, within the week from now. Uh, okay, so this is, I think, the end of the lecture. If you have any other questions, feel free to give me a shout because this is the last moment for, for me to, to answer you. Okay, mm, thank you so much. Okay, perfect. So, so if there are no further questions, uh, I think that I will wait something like uh, ten more seconds, uh, or maybe fifteen, because the question might take some time to uh, to be asked. But uh, I think that uh, everything is pretty much clear. Mm, I, okay, thank you for for uh, for this warm uh, words. I'm happy that uh, that you like the the lecture. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, I definitely recommend you to, to check our site, beamstreamer.com. Uh, you should see the link in, in one of the previous uh, uh, messages within the chat history. If you navigate to knowledge and webinars, you are able to see the, the webinar recordings that we're organizing, mainly for manufacturer, of course, but, uh, but uh, maybe some of the topics you might find relevant so thank you very much if some of you would like to get me get contact with me directly here you have my email address so so you can just take a screenshot of this uh, of this slide and 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 uh, contact me uh, later on so thank you very much and uh, i hope to see you uh, within a week from now have a nice weekend <laughs>